On January 6, 2019, the project of Petro Poroshenko and Fana on creating a new church in Ukraine was finalized. Slava Ukraini! January 7th, the first liturgy of the Oku took place in St. Sophia of Kiev, where the presentation of the Thomas took place. This service was conducted for a narrow elite circle of people, politicians, government officials, leaders of radical nationalists. For ordinary citizens, the Thomas was exhibited in the Little Sophia after the service. People stood in the cold in the queue for an hour and a half to worship the document, which, according to the president, the Ukrainians had been waiting for thousands of years. And the main thesis, which is now being promoted to the people, that the Ukrainians got rid of slavery, they received spiritual independence. But not all. There are right Ukrainians who are with the OKU. And there are wrong ones, who even have the wrong Thomas, signed by Stalin. The world orthodox believes that the schismatics from the Kiev Patriarchate, despite having changed their name for Oku, remain schismatics. Therefore, the president focuses on autocephaly, that is, the independence of the new structure. Thomas як грамоту про визнання самостійності нашої української церкви. Самостійності. Furthermore, he contrasts it in every way with the UOC, which is supposedly dependent on Moscow. But is the UOC really subordinate to Moscow, and is Oko in so much free from Constantinople? Indeed, let's read and compare. The letter on autonomy of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of 1990, which can be referred to as Thomas, says, By virtue of this letter and the power of all sacred and life-giving spirit, we bless the Orthodox Ukrainian Church to be henceforth independent and autonomous in its administration. The same thing is said in the statute of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church. The UOC is independent and autonomous in its administration and organization. The statute of the Russian Church reads, the governing center of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church is located in Kiev. But this is all theory, and how does it work in practice? The Ukrainian Orthodox Church has existed for more than a quarter of the century. Maybe there were some attempts from Moscow to sabotage the documents, to try to somehow influence, restrict the independence of the UOC? No, nothing like this has ever happened. In the Thomas for the Oku, which is called fully autocephalous and independent, it is written in black and white. The autocephalous church in Ukraine knows as it's had the most holy apostolic and patriarchal ecumenical throne. In orthodoxy, the local churches are absolutely equal. Can one church recognize another church as its head? Obviously it can. But then it is neither autocephalous nor independent. The text of the Thomas reads, In the case of major issues of ecclesiastical, doctrinal and canonical nature, his pity to the Metropolitan of Kiev and all Ukraine must, on behalf of the Holy Synod of his Church, address our most holy, patriarchal and ecumenical throne. Can one Church address another Church to resolve its Church-related issues? Obviously it can. But then, it is neither autocephalous nor independent. The statute of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church says that the head of the UOC is elected by its episcopate and blessed by the Most Holy Patriarch of Moscow and all Rus. But it is theory. And what about practice? Who, 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 who,
буде затверджений Москвою. Не може бути таке, що ми виберемо одного представителя, а він, а Москва скаже, ні, нам це не подобається, вибирайте іншого. Такого не може бути. Тому Москва автоматично затверджує наш вибір, кого б ми не вибрали. Тому тут в тому плані є абсолютна автономія і незалежність. When in 2014 Hesbitu Chodonufri was elected to the post of primate, no one from the bishops of Moscow gave any guidelines to the UOC, nor did they even give any temniki. The choice of bishops was completely independent. As for the blessing of Hesbitu Chodonufri by the Patriarch of the Russian Orthodox Church, it was just a fraternal message. In the Thomas for Oku, the choice of the primate is not specified in a separate clause, but it is said that in the case of important church issues, Oku is obliged to address Constantinople, while it is difficult to find a more important issue than the choice of the head of the church. Anyway, this is only a document, a theory. What happens in practice? The Ocus primate was approved by Fanar, but perhaps the following, if they are to be, will do without the control of Constantinople? Hardly. Twenty years ago, in 1998, the Church of the Czech clans in Slovakia received the Thomas from Fana. There are no paragraphs concerning the fact that this church recognizes Constantinople as its head and is obliged to address it to solve important church issues. Nevertheless, when in 2014 the Episcopate of the Church of the Czech lands elected Metropolitan Rostislav its head, Fana did not recognize this choice and demanded to choose the one it considered appropriate. In a letter to the Secretariat of the Church of the Czech lands in Slovakia, Patriarch Bartholomew in 2015 writes, we urgently demand the Holy Synod to convene a meeting of clergy and laity, that they generally overhaul the issue in the light of the cancellation of the election of the aforementioned Metropolitan Rostislav to the post of primate of this church and proceed to elect a new primate. Патріарх Фарфоломій навіть написав листи до чеської держави, щоб вони не визнавали митрополита Ростислава, оскільки це, визнання, це обрання нібито є неканонічним. І почалася проблема. Nevertheless, Constantinople finally recognized Metropolitan Rostislav, but only because Patriarch Bartholomew in 2016 needed the presence of all local churches to attend the Cretan Council in order for the Council to have the status and semblance of legitimacy. Besides, it must be said that in the Thomas text for the Czech Church there are no paragraphs that would allow controlling the election of the head of this church by Fana. Those very provisions on the subordination to Constantinople, which are spelled out in the Ukrainian Thomas for Oku. Can one church accept guidelines for electing its primate from another church? Obviously it can, but then it is neither autocephalous nor independent. В справи автокефальної церкви не може втручатися жодна інша православна церква, якщо сама ця перша автокефальна церква її про це не попросить. Ми стоїмо фактично перед фактом іншого розуміння церкви, перед фактом іншого розуміння еклезіології, перед фактом вивищення Костопольського прихату над іншими церквами. The Ukrainian Orthodox Church is not mentioned in the diptych, but it is recognized by all the local churches. Наші зовнішні зв'язки є абсолютно такими незалежними. Українська православна церква фактично стала суб'єктом в міжцерковних міжправославних відносинах. Хоча ми не є автокефальною церквою, ми є такою майже автокефальною без п'яти хвилин по правах всіх. Авторитет УПЦ за ці роки він піднявся, він розширився. In 2014, representatives of 12 out of the 15 local churches came to the enthronement of his beatitude on Ufri for congratulations and fraternal messages. Those who could not come send their congratulations. The Oko is listed by Fana in the diptych and, according to the Thomas, is obliged to participate in inter-Orthodox meetings. Nonetheless, these commitments so far have not led to the recognition of the Oku from any local church. The Russian, Serbian and Polish churches did not officially recognize this structure. Polish Metropolitan Sava said that he did not even consider Epiphany to be a priest. 
нашей церкви, уважаемый Сава митрополит Варшавский Сия Польши, от имени полноты нашей церкви. The head of the Church of Cyprus, Archbishop Chrysostom, said he does not commemorate Epiphany and does not intend to do this, while Patriarch of Antioch, John X, in a letter to the head of Fana, wrote that the creation of Ogo is a threat to the unity of the entire Orthodox world. Prayer is a conversation between a Christian and God. It is a linchpin of the whole life of the Church. Christ tells us we must love everyone, including those whom we regard enemies. The Church prays for all, good and bad, the righteous and the criminals. To position as an achievement that your Church will not pray for someone is very, very strange and hardly has anything to do with Christianity. One of the victories of Petro Poroshenko in the creation of Oku is that, since it is the Ukrainian church, it will not make a liturgical mention of Patriarch Kirill, so much hated by him. What is this church? This is a church without Kirill. And maybe there are churches, which are praying for the prayer of the Patriarch, who is praying for the Russian army, to call themselves Ukrainian. Nevertheless, Patriarch Kirill was to be commemorated. From the point of view of Christianity, to pray for each person is right. After all, the non-commemoration of the faux Patriarch is one of the declared victories of the new independent church. So, again, where is independence? In 1686, when Constantinople handed over its Kiev metropolis to the Russian Church, its area occupied no more than a third of the territory of modern Ukraine. That is, most of it had nothing to do with Constantinople at all. Now, Fanar has in fact subjugated a much larger territory than it had 330 years ago. In today's Thomas, it is written that while the prerogatives of the ecumenical throne of the exarchate and sacred Stavropedial institutions in Ukraine shall be preserved unmitigated. On November 3, 2018, the President signed a document with the head of Fanar, the contents of which are still kept secret. The media talk about dozens of temples and monasteries which will be transferred to get directly controlled by Fanar, including those belonging to the UOC. Obviously, Petro Poroshenko himself already understands it is impossible to call Oku an autocephalous church. That's why he speaks of it as a metropolis of honor. However, he immediately makes a reservation. Those who disagree that the metropolis personifies autocephaly and independence are almost agents of Moscow. Not so long ago, Filaret declared that he did not want to obey either Moscow or Constantinople, that his goal was absolute independence. If we wanted to be just recognized, then we would have stayed in the Moscow Patriarch. What difference is it that we are going to Moscow or Constantinople? We Потрібна незалежна церква, яка б була незалежна від будь-яких церковних центрів, а була б сама центром. According to the text of Thomas, it is quite obvious that the church created for Ukrainian schismatics is autocephalous and independent only nominally. In reality, it is a structure subordinate to Fanar. As the main achievement of Oku, Petro Poroshenko calls the lifting of the Moscow yoke. But the Ukrainian Orthodox Church has never had it, not to speak of the Kiev Patriarchate. Then what kind of yoke can we talk about? The very fact of the cancellation of the document being more than 300 years old and whose validity has been recognized by absolutely everyone for all these years 
by Fanner in the first place cannot but shock. Indeed, over the years the borders of both secular states and local churches have changed beyond recognition. The world has become completely different and such a revocation inevitably raises the question if this document can be cancelled with respect to Ukraine, then it means that any others can be cancelled too. But will this practice benefit us Ukrainians? Take for example the reunification with the lands of Western Ukraine, which occurred in 1939 as a result of the collusion of Molotov-Ribbentrop. Is the pact questionable? Of course, perhaps even criminal. But will we want to cancel it? За кожним з них десятки мільйонів загублених життів. As a result of the actions of Constantinople, none of the local churches can feel safe. After all, Fana's ambitions are so great that if it chose to cancel its own document on Ukraine, it could easily interfere in the affairs of any other church. І зараз інші церкви дуже занепокоєні тим, що до них можуть в певний момент прийти і також вплутатися в якісь їхні справи. The very fact of the abolition of the patriarchal letter of 1686, like the last year's cancellation by Fanner of the Exarchate of the Russian parishes in Europe, says that Constantinople cancels its letters as easily as it gives them. The text of the Thomas for Oku suggests that Fanner declares the Oku on all the above conditions. It means, if the conditions are violated, then the Thomas might be revoked too. It seems that to the cries of independence, the president, along with Fanner, put a real yoke on the neck of the Ukrainian schismatics. They were never recognized canonical, but lost their independence. Besides, the Kiev Patriarchate has also lost dozens of parishes outside Ukraine, in America, Europe, Russia and so on. Indeed, according to the Thomas, all of them are now transferred to Constantinople. Nevertheless, the president has achieved his goal. Before the elections, he received a powerful Trump card for his pre-election campaign and now exploits it 100%. But what have the OKU creators actually achieved? The Church is the body of Christ. If it is built on hatred of the neighbor, this is not the Church. If it is built on tears of believers from whom their temples are taken away, this is not the Church. If it serves as a background for the election campaign of politicians, this is not the Church. Nevertheless, the Oku creators are afraid to violate neither the laws of the state, nor the laws of morality or the laws of God. Well, should we, members of the true Church, have any fear? The one that is being persecuted and harassed? We should. This is the blessed time for us and we need to be afraid not to waste it. The time when we should learn not to condemn our lost brothers. The time when we can establish ourselves in the love of God and the Church. And the time when the sheep are separated from the goats. And we should not be mistaken with our choice. <laughs>